year 2020. The moon has been explored and colonized, and the next space goal is about to be reached, the first landing by man on the planet Venus. Scientists profoundly hope that life, similar to that on Earth, may be found on this planet where so many physical conditions are like our own. Three rocket ships of an international space expedition, the Sirius, Vega, and Capella, after having successfully traveled 200 million miles, are in the final stages of their journey, rapidly approaching their destination. Hello, sir. I'm afraid she's been hit by a meteorite. Damn it. Completely destroyed, sir. Contact the Sirius at once. Yes, sir. And almost to their goal. It seems so unfair. There's no fair or unfair. To a meteorite, you get hit, you die. Seems so unreal. I just spoken to them. We joked. It's Lunar 7, Commander. Patch it is. Attention, crews of Sirius and Vega. We were deeply shocked to learn of the loss of the Capella. Flight plan A, however, must still be followed. Therefore, we request both ships to go into orbit and remain there until the arrival of spaceship Asta, due to blast off here immediately. Meanwhile, secure and relay instrument information about conditions on Venus. That is all. That's well. Orbit and wait. For how long? Months? Why complain? Ah. It's Hartman. He's the one who built this baby. And now when he says we should go fly all around Venus, that's precisely what'll happen. Better plan on it. There's more I can do than orbit and wait. What do you mean? Look, the plan before was to land just one ship. That's true, with the cybernetic machine. You keep him. Better I pilot it. But Andre, the machine will study the land. This I know. But I'm more observant, more apt to see what's going on. You don't want to send this monster. Venus must be seen by more than a robot. All right. Just suppose we go along with you, Andre. What about Hartman's plan? Hartman would agree with me. But we can't take that chance. Then what do we do? We contact Kurt, and we ask him to have the robot compute a landing plan for the auxiliary spacecraft. Soon he'll be our boss. Awaken, John. Awaken. Glow, John. Monitor, John. I hear you. Preview us. Be extra precise. There are changes you must make in our present landing pattern program. Plan now is Sirius and Vega. You. Me and Sherman on the same spaceship. Then Commander Lockhart, Walters, and Furneaux in the second ship. First ship Sirius, second ship Vega. Problem, land on Venus and return. Land three and three, Sirius returns five, leaving one. What man remains? Since one of six must remain, that one shall be me. Lunar Station 7. This is Command Ship Vega calling. Command Ship Vega. Come in, Vega. We read you. Professor Hartman, message from the Vega. Alan Cancer Thomason has computed a new flight plan. We request approval for landing of Kern, Sherman, and Robot in the auxiliary spacecraft. 
They will seek a safe area on Venus to land. Command ship Sirius with Lockhart, Walters, and Fourneau. I will keep the Vega in orbit in order to assure the safe return of the Sirius with all men. We feel it unnecessary to have to wait for the arrival of the Astor. Uh, this is Professor Hartman speaking. Your plan is quite logical. But I'm concerned about the possible psychological danger to you in remaining too long alone on the Vega. Uh, get me Evan's psychological test record, will you? Well, I had expected to land with the others, but in view of the emergency situation, I feel this is a better plan. Professor Hartman, I'm, I'm positive I can handle it. So am I, Doc. Who's that? German, Professor. Didn't anyone ever tell you ladies are tougher than men? <laughs> You're quite right, German. Uh, perhaps I did forget. Permission granted. Thank you, Professor Hartman. I will contact you again with a progress report at 0400 hours. Commander Lockhart, Vega calling. Yes? We've received permission to land to be followed by the Sirius. Well, now. And just how do you suggest we manage that? Marsha will stay and keep Vega in order. It's a job. But it sounds like it's all set. Kern's robot calculated the details. If you're sure, let's get moving on it. Andre? I'm ready, Skipper. I'm with you also. Sherman, make room for a spaceship. I'll join you there. Maybe with luck. See you on Venus. <laughs> Pressure reading on planet's surface, two and three. No sign of opening. Cloud formations, 30% ash content. I see something, a spot of red glowing with great brilliance right through the spectrum. A spot of red could be Hades. We are now gathering all possible data in preparation for landing. However, no observation from orbit can let us know the answer to the most important question we've come to ask of Venus. Does life in any form exist on this planet? And if so, what kind? I personally doubt if any does, my dear Marsha. A planet of fire below us. Is it a new world or will it consume us all? Buzz. Bright red spot could be a city or something. Attention, Sirius. Attention, Sirius. Sherman Kern and Automaton John, ready to embark at zero, 100 hours. I envy you, Sherman, and you, Alan Kern, to be the first humans to set foot on Venus. We wish you all success. I envy you both. Good luck. Bon voyage. She's about to enter the cloud layer. She's moving well. At any moment now. Black clouds, lightning. I don't like the looks of this. I'm turning control over to Robot John. Ahead, steep mountain, I am going up. Wow, close call. We're watching on the location finder. The area is strange. This is truly a prehistoric planet. Prehistoric planet is right. Hey, there's a hard level spot. Right. Attention, Sirius. Your landing location is square 73. 
We're now dropping our beacon. Landing 300 meters southwest of square 73. Uh oh, there's water beneath us. We're drifting. Commander Lockhart? Commander Lockhart, what happened? Marsha, don't be too worried. The signal was only broken by the horizon. I'm sure they've landed. In an hour when we pass in orbit, we'll contact them again. Yes, sir. Is there anything further you'd like me to do? Not for now. We might as well all get some rest. Sherman. Kern. Answer. Kern. Sherman. Kern. Are you there? It's hopeless. No choice. Let's break orbit. We'll prepare the ship. You better bring her about and plan a course to find her. Marsha. Marsha, are you listening? Yes, Commander. It's likely they're in trouble and need help. The responsibility is ours. Listen to me. If something should happen, don't you be afraid. I won't. I promise. Shall I sign off now? You can help us most if you will be brave and keep faith. I will. Hello, Sirius. This is Professor Hartman speaking. Hello, Sirius. This is Professor Hartman speaking. We wish you to feel free to discontinue the expedition at your own discretion. Don't take unnecessary risks. Your lives are too valuable. All the nations of the Earth are eagerly awaiting the result of your exploration. We wish you all success. Switch. Lunar 7. My men, the ship, are just about to break through and drop. The plan is to land approximately the plot area 73. This should put us in position to contact Sherman and Kern or to give them help if needed. My people are proud and privileged to be chosen members of this expedition. The first on Venus's surface. Our special thanks to all people of Earth. Well, my boy. All we can do now is wait. What do you think they'll find, Doctor? Your guess is as good as mine. Let's just hope that they arrive there safely. Begin celebrating yet. <laughs> oh. Oh. Is our level okay? Yep, there it is. On the button. Boy, it sure feels strange to have weight. Yes, it does seem strange. That's sure. But it's nice and solid. Well, I don't know about you fellas, but I'd like to see Venus. Open number three and hit the beam.
Paper. Try the port viewer. Telescreen gets it okay. We'll pan port. Formations of weird rock. Something's there. I'll switch on the outside sound pickup. Finished. Transfer it to playback. Meanwhile, you might check upon the atmosphere, Hans. It better be good. Then you better get your spacesuit. We'll move out. Andre, I want you to attempt a contact with Sherman by radio. If you raise them, tell them to report their position. Then get yourself into a spacesuit. We're going to walk about. I'm right behind you. That'll be handy if I slip. Get popping now. It's 4.7 on oxygen. That's pretty close. solid rocks. I'll check out there. Keep on the rope. Don't get out of visual contact. I just received a message. What did they say? Marsha has radar movement. Sherman? She can't be sure, but it looks like two objects. One metallic and moving in the area we expected to search. Probably Kern and Sherman. Come on, Andre. your contact. Again. 
Can you imagine that? He's bashful. Why don't we take one of those things home for the zoo? You've got to be more careful, Andre. If we hadn't heard you call me. I didn't call. You called out to us. We heard you. But I didn't call you. It sounded like Lockhart. Let's be getting back. Call Marsh again, Andre. Make contact with crew of Sirius again at 0825. They reported a perfect landing on square 73 as planned. Marsha, this is Commander Lockhart. Yes, Commander. I'm afraid you haven't given us enough information about the location of the spacecraft. I need to know their precise position. I'm sorry. I was so happy you'd made a safe landing, I forgot to tell you. They are in square 107, about a mile from the red spot. The direct distance from you is 32 miles across the bay. We'll have to go by air. Is the car ready? More than ready. Will the car make it there? It does, or we walk. I'd sure like a four-lane freeway. Bet that you'd get a flat. Commander? Yes? What's happened to the robot? Marsha. Marsha? Have you been apprised at all about the robot? Well, apparently they're having some difficulty with him. He was loaded aboard the ship, partially disassembled. I'm afraid they haven't been able to reassemble him yet. Keep coming. More, John. That's it. Cover me, Kirk. Look out. Here comes another one. One hundred and ten. Secure yourself to that folder, John. Proceed. Proceed. to fight this place than we are. I'm wondering if we should be here at all. Why don't you catch a bus and go home? Don't think I wouldn't if I could find one. There he is. He's up. Pull it tight. He can hold it. You better go first, and I'll come along after you. here. See what I see? Snoozing. Let's hope he doesn't wake up. He may want us for lunch. I'll try for a blood sample if I don't goof. Take the blood out of his tail. Stay out of his vision. Right. Make it quick now.
What did Marcia say? They're all moving toward our present position now, very slowly. Let's rest. We have very little oxygen left us. Hope they're on the way. Looking for us. Through this heat. They may not be able to make it through to us. You better hope they'll get through it and spot us. I'm beginning to feel like my head's swimming. Of course. It's your torn suit. Infection is getting through. Maybe we ought to take some quinsel. No. We'd have to rest after. Must keep moving. Shoreline's the best. If we do, my friend, we'll never make it to them. Fat chance there is of finding them. That voice again. Hold up. Sounds like a girl. A girl? Perhaps. Or a monster. It's a human sound. Well, there are sure no humans here. Well, we're humans. Well, no one else has made it. You better believe it. But it sounds so human. Subhuman, you mean, like that 40 arm plant that just grabbed you. I still say it's a girl. A girl with blue scales. Could be. He's on to something. It's possible that before us, other men got here, especially in this age. You ought to know that, Hans. To a man of science, anything is possible until proven otherwise. It wouldn't be surprising if maybe Andre would find something. Furthermore, this whole galaxy we're in could have been explored and inhabited. Well, I can't imagine any people in their right mind exploring planet Venus. Come on, Hans. We're here, and we're in our right minds, aren't we? Huh. Let's go. We 
they can't stay here, we'll be washed away. John. Bring him this way. There is no water. Come on. Just a little bit further. There's a cave right over there. Come on. That's it. Just a few steps further. Come in, please. Kern Sherman, answer, please. Hans Walters, do you hear me? I sure do. What seems to be the matter? What makes you think there's something wrong? I can always tell by the tone of your voice. Oh. Well, I can't seem to contact Kern and Sherman any longer. I don't know what's happened to them. We're on our way to them now, so just keep trying. Will do. Lord, save them. What? There's no response from Kern or Sherman. Well, we should soon be there. Keep trying. Maybe we can bring them in on the helmet, Mike. Kern has an auxiliary. I am. I'm getting... The woman must be Marsha. Stud, it's really awful. Hear it? From what I can determine, Kern's blow up has been slightly down. His frequency is the truth. He's about to go. Move it up. Point to point on the dial. We'll find him. I'll try it. Hello. John, hello. John, listen. This is the command ship. Are you there? No response. Come in. Up one more point. Come in. Better go to solar battery. Much bigger reach. I'm on it now. Hello. 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 You must hear me, John. Please open your mic and answer me. You must obey me, John. No response. Try another point. One, two, five. You have to readjust your frequency for transmitting. If you hear me. I hear you. I have adjusted. Can you report your position and plot number? Over. Square 40. In shelter. Tell me what's outside. Water rock above falling on large rock. That's square 40. Not far. Ask him about the men. Hello. We would like to know about Kern and also about Sherman. Hey. They do not move. How much time before we get there? Who knows? Commander, maybe the robot can help. Try. Keep an eye on the compass. Grab onto them. Hello. You will listen, John. First, you will obey me and do precisely what I say. You will listen. Listen, John. Obey my every command. Remove container two from Kern's first aid kit. Repeat, container two. Mm-hmm. 
Remove one tap. One tap. Then open his helmet. I have one tablet. Place the tablet in his mouth. You must do this quickly. Revive him with water. Pour it over his face. Quickly. Then close his helmet. At zero, 915 hours, I transmitted all latest data from Venus to Lunar Station 7. At zero, 130 hours, I passed in orbit over the air car. It was at that time about to embark on the Venusian Ocean. At least we know they're alive. Let's hope they stay that way. Commander, look there. I'm ready with the astrocon. Some kind of flying reptile. You may not see us. He hit. He's turning around. Maybe not. We're in for it now. He knows we're here. Luck. Take it now. Here he comes. Don't miss him. Marsha. We're being attacked by a flying animal. Air car damage. Transmit to number seven. Commander Lockhart, what happened? What shall I transmit? Here he comes again. Open hull. We'll submerge. Station 7. This is Marcia Evans calling from Command Ship Vega. Marcia Evans calling from Command Ship Vega. Yes, Marcia, we read you. I need emergency instruction immediately. Professor Hoffman speaking. What is it, Evans? I have now lost contact with both parties on Venus. At last contact, Lockhart, Ferno, and Walters were being attacked in the air car over water by an unknown flying animal. They apparently have submerged. I'm afraid they may need my help. Shall I land? Listen carefully, Evans. It would be extremely Lunar Station 7. Lunar Station 7, I can't hear you. Come in, please. Hello, Dr. Vega. Hoffman, I need your instructions. Come, Come in, please. Vega. What is it? Why can't we get through to her? Just a moment, Doctor. I'm checking the power. Command Ship Vega. Calling Command Ship Vega. Attention, Marcia Evans. Under no circumstances are you to leave orbit now. This is extremely important. I'm sorry, Doctor. We just we just can't get through to her. I'm afraid there's a short in the right. power circuit. Place it and fix it. We simply can't allow her to leave orbit now. Dr. Hartman, come in, please. I just don't know what to do. The air car isn't fit for submerging. If their suits aren't damaged, they could get out. It may be they're hurt. And if they are, they need my help. I can only land on the next orbit. I'll have to...
have to wait an hour yet before switching on the propellants. A whole hour. But I feel I must go to them. I must. Let's put it down for a minute. Take a rest. It's not far to the beach, if our calculations are correct. I hope this will run again. Don't worry, it will. Look, the cliffs are all in even rows, like streets. I'll look around, just five minutes. Might find something interesting. That's a shark's tail. Yes, but with the head of a dolphin. Andre, don't go too far. a cave, only the entrance looks like it's been carved. You've gone far enough. Why don't you come back now? Just a quick look. Might find something. only a petrified tree. Only? Why, it's a bronze statue. And much more, Hans. Rubies. You say rubies? Show me. Simple. The eye of an idol. An idol? Yes, a reptile. A reptile resembling that flying monster that attacked us earlier. Up there. You're right, Andre. I'm not laughing anymore. There was a civilization here. And I'll bet you there still is. oxygen. Pull harder, John! Harder! Can you imagine a home built out here in this beautiful valley? Looks nice. Don't expect too many visits from me if you do, my friend. I'm homesick already. Oh, look at the fun we'd have fighting the lizard man. Look, the tree's falling. We'll soon have our bridge. Go 
Good work, John. We are ready to cross now. Play some music, hmm? To march across by. What would you like to hear, Mr. Kern? Anything you are programmed to play, my dear John. I couldn't have lasted much longer. You're, you're not alone. Here we are, Skipper. Good. We'll need more fire. Everything in the car is soaking wet. Ah, uh, feels good to sit. How are the batteries, Hans? They stay dry. The atom plant? Still hot. You've got that worried look again, Hans. You're right. I've pulled and checked every wire and part in that darn radio. It won't operate. I've tried everything I know. I tell you, it's simply hopeless. How about a long string in an oatmeal box? <laughs> oh, Neil Pox. The radio will dry out. We know it's not a dead planet. Not completely. Our proof is the statue. And Ruby. And the woman. She's probably somewhere. For his sake. But the main thing is, there could be a whole race of people out there watching us, hiding, afraid that we'll observe them. And bite them? We came from above, Drop. To them, we're probably some kind of monster. What if they're human shape? They very well could look like us. But mind you, I'm only advancing a little hypothetical science fiction, because nothing should be overlooked. Let's face it, they built a city that's now under the sea. Hans, it must be true. Many made it to shore from the sea. Then why didn't they build themselves another? We may find they did when we explore the planet. Beautiful song and a beautiful girl. She must have heard you. Where is it? Everywhere. I suppose it could be an omen. Or maybe she's helping us. If I could just see what she looks like. Can the car make it? I'm sure. Are you a lovely lady, face that I admire, or a monster looking down on us with horns and breathing fire? Andre! Andre! Thanks for waiting. <laughs> She'd take care of you. Stop teasing him, hon. He's in love. <laughs> Strange. It's gotten suddenly dark. Well, it's no wonder. What makes you say that? There's an ash cloud above us. 
An ash cloud. A volcano. Yes. It's spectacular. And beyond the volcano, it looks like the lights of a city. The red spot Andre saw. We must get a move on. Not right away. This might be our only chance to gather some samples. Lava and ash. To take away with us. All right. We'll go to a much better vantage point than right now. Sherman, come. But look at the magnificence. No one on Earth has seen such a sight. Go to higher ground. I am hurrying. Are you getting the spectra sample? Getting it now. That's enough. The lava is rising. We waited too long. It's covered our path. Perhaps we can run a rope. How? We did it before. From John. There's no more time. Nice. John? Yes, I hear you. Carry us across the lava. Climb on, quick! Takes hurry. Huh? 
just a metal monster. <laughs> and yet when his destruction was imminent, he called my name. Looks placid and calm. But frightening. Yes, I suppose it does, if you use imagination. We'll soon be home. That's right. But we'll leave a friend behind. Join the rest of us. Any luck? No. No. We'll be out of here soon. How do you know that? What else is there to do? Well, we can look for Andre's girl. Very cute, Hans. You name them after us? Hmm? Well, with triplets, it's better with numbers. Looks to me like he's raising his own countdown. Why not names? I'd forget. I'm worried about him. <laughs> so you really found proof there were people on this planet. Hard to believe. Believe it or not, my dear Mr. Kern, it's true. And they could still be here. I don't go along with that. Could a human survive in a place like this? You survive? And man will almost always adapt himself in time. And don't forget in the dim past we all lived in water. For centuries our earth was toxic. But that atmosphere evolved mankind's form. Adjusting's the answer. And I bet that these people on our planet couldn't live. The air'd be poisoned. I'm afraid I don't share your opinion. You just can't close your mind to it. We found proof. Proof of intelligent being. And those lizard men of Kearns. That's proof. Look, suppose they do look like lizards. Couldn't they be people? Hmm? Suppose they saw the ship, got frightened, then donned their lizard costumes, eh? Then jumped up and down to spook us away. <laughs> what possible story could explain it better, huh? <laughs> None. You're the winner. Joking aside, my friend, man, lizard, or what? I know there were or are intelligent people here. If we just had time. I think they might come to us. Look, even you, Kern, said you thought you saw the lights of a city beyond the volcano. I said they looked like, not were. Here, you two. Have some coffee and rest your voices. 
that voice that comes to us now and then, what does she look like? If I could only see her. She couldn't be anything but beautiful. Why do I keep thinking about it? I'll probably never know the answer. Better get out and locate her, Andre. She wants you to stay on me. Just you wait. I think perhaps we should be trying to find her and take her with us. <laughs> I vote for that. But she might not like us much anyway. If we could explore beyond those hills, I'll bet you money we'd find her and the city. You've been reading too many comics. Kern wouldn't believe she existed if she were sitting on his lap right now. Want to bet? We're here. Boys, I think we did a job we can be proud of. Look at all the samples we got. There's gonna be a large headline when they see all these great things we're bringing back to them. This one's loaded, old man. Steady, child. Bring the spectra. That's the last. Commander Lockhart, hurry. We have Marsha's recording from Vega. I hope the automatic recorders in Sirius will record this message. I have been unable to contact Lunar Station 7 for further instructions. I cannot wait any longer while my fellow astronauts are in need of my help. I am therefore disobeying Plan 1 and landing on Venus. The dial of the automatic control system is now indicating that in one minute the propellants will be ignited. I... now. More than that. Marsha's mistake was the worst. The worst. We'd better make a plan. A good one. No more from the scope. I hope she's still up safe. Hello, Vega. Hello, she Vega. may have crashed Come and burned. Vega. I pray not. We should notify Hartman. We can only contact Hartman through Vega. Men, we must act. You, Sherman, Hearn, Andre, I suggest this. 
Maybe she's there. Hans and I must blast up in orbit. We'll try to locate Vega. If we find her there at all, and I pray we do, we'll contact you and Dr. Hartman. Yes, sir. How do the rest of you feel? I'm for moving up just as fast as we can get airborne. <laughs> Quickly, Andre. Hans. This was all level ground when we landed. The stream's cutting a whole new channel above. Skipper, look here. A crack running clear across. If it widens anymore, we'll all be lost. Quick, lighten ship for emergency blast off. Maybe we can beat it. you say you saw her? I didn't, but radar has. There's a record of her passing after that time. She didn't land after all. She's still up there. You sure? Let's try her. Marcia, hello. Come in. Marsh, what happened to you? I'm all right. Professor Hartman reached me again, just as the ship was about to start. He ordered me to wait, no matter how I felt. He made me realize my responsibility. I'm very grateful to him now. But your orbit is different. Well, the propellants had already started, and it changed before I could shut them off. Now Hartman's plan makes good sense. Hello. Now give me your new orbit plot. And position. Attention. Everyone return to the ship. What could it be? We've heard from Marsha. She's still in orbit. Marsha. Andre, throw the switch on the weather station. Yes, sir. So, man's search for intelligent life on other planets and in other galaxies will continue. For this is the heart and the meaning of that great adventure, the exploration of the universe. <laughs>